I have spent over three years building computational redstone, and in this video I will cover the setup that I use to build CPUs such as the MPU7 here. So firstly, what version of Minecraft do I use? I use Java version 1.17.1 currently, as newer versions such as 1.18 haven't added anything useful for computational redstone. Also, the OR Minecraft server and MCHPRS mod both currently use version 1.17.1. Now how do I set up my redstone world? I build everything in my single player redstone world, and I have my redstone world set up in a very specific way. As you can see, I use a void world, which gives me the maximum amount of space for my redstone creations. I used to use the basic sandstone world, but I found that the sandstone would often get in the way for larger redstone creations. And why bother removing the sandstone manually each time when you can just use a void world in the first place? I have used this exact redstone world for the past three years, meaning that all 11 Minecraft CPUs that I have built are in this world somewhere, along with everything else I have ever built. I just found out whilst making this video that using slash time query game time tells you how many ticks have passed in your Minecraft world, and apparently I have spent nearly 3000 hours in my redstone world, and that only counts the unpaused time spent in this world, and does not count how many hours I have also spent in VS Code, which I thought was pretty cool. For the game rules in my redstone world, I only have a couple of them. I have do daylight cycle set to false, which stops nighttime from happening, and I also have do tile drops set to false. This stops redstone dust from popping off when breaking blocks. You can also turn off mob spawning if you want to, and enable keep inventory for when you accidentally fall out the world. Ask me how I know. Now for my texture packs. The main texture pack I use is Code Crafted, which is Mumbo Jumbo's old texture pack. I use it because it has high contrast redstone lamps, making displays a lot clearer and nicer looking. It also gives wool a vivid solid colour, which is a lot better than the noisy default texture. And it also makes some of the redstone components look nice. I also use vanilla tweaks to display the redstone signal strength as a number on top of the dust, so I do not have to use the F3 debug menu to see it. Finally, I use Red CMD's Lamp Door Pack, which simply retextures trapdoors to look like redstone lamps. I use this for the displays on the MPU7 as trapdoors instantly toggle on and off, while redstone lamps turn on instantly, but they take two ticks to turn off, which can cause smearing on displays that update quickly. For my settings, I have everything set to the absolute minimum, except for the render distance which I have set to 32 chunks. This is to maximise the frame rate whilst enabling me to build huge redstone creations. I also have my frame rate capped at 30 FPS, as this is the highest stable frame rate that my current 1050 Ti graphics card can do. I would love to play at 60 FPS, but I would need a stronger GPU, and as you likely already know, currently the prices are obscene, so unless the MPU starts paying the bills, I'm stuck at 30 FPS. Next are the mods I use. Even though everything is compatible with vanilla Minecraft, I still use a lot of mods. The mods I use are built for fabric, as I use the fabric mod loader, and all of these mods I use fall under three main categories. The first category are the performance mods. These increase the speed that Minecraft runs at, and considering how awfully laggy the base game is, these are almost required. First I use sodium, which massively increases the general client frame rate as well as chunk loading speeds. Then I use lithium, which improves the tick speed of the game. I also use starlight, which makes the lighting engine run faster. Then I use alternative current, 
which makes all redstone components a lot less laggy. And finally, I use torch dimmer, which prevents redstone torches from emitting light to prevent unneeded lighting updates in redstone builds. The second category are quality of life mods, which fix many simple issues in the game that have existed for years that Mojang haven't been bothered to fix themselves. The first and arguably most important is World Edit, which enables easy movement and copy pasting of selections of blocks, as well as exporting and importing selections of blocks as schematic files, enabling them to be shared and pasted easily on other worlds. Next is the Better Controls mod, which enables you to disable flight inertia to make the flight controls less like sliding around an ice rink, and it allows the vertical flight speed to be increased as the default vertical speed is so painfully slow that falling is faster. Also, it enables the flight button to be rebound to a different button from the jump key. I have mine bound to the tab button, which prevents me from accidentally disabling flight and falling out of the world. It also makes it much easier to toggle when the game is lagging, as it only requires one button press instead of two. Next is Carpet Mod, which has several things such as disabling fog to allow you to see further, and enabling no clip in creative mode so you can fly around your builds unimpeded, and the slash tick command which enables you to speed up, slow down, or freeze the game ticks, which is very useful for debugging. Then I use Tweakaroo, which is another mod that includes many different things, such as removing particles when destroying blocks, disabling lighting updates, and enabling flexible placement, which allows me to place blocks diagonally or place them facing the opposite direction. Finally, I use the Accurate Block Placement mod, which allows for blocks to be accurately placed regardless of how fast you're moving. This is very useful when placing long lines of redstone dust or rows of blocks to ensure placements aren't missed. The third category are mods I use for recording. The first, of course, is Replay Mod. This enables me to record a replay file of something such as my CPU running, then I can later export the replay file at higher frame rates, usually 60 FPS, and I can have shaders enabled. It however takes ages to render the video, and file sizes are horrific, but in my opinion the results are worth it. For my shaders, I use the Iris Shaders mod with the complementary shader pack, which I only use for taking screenshots or with replay mod when exporting videos, as my frame rate turns into a slideshow if I attempt to use them outside of recording. Finally, I use the isometric render mod. This allows me to take isometric pictures of my redstone builds, which is useful for sharing pictures on Discord. I have put links to everything mentioned in this video in the description if you want to check them out. And if you have any further questions, feel free to ask me on the URCL Discord, also linked below. If you made it this far into the video, be sure to comment Llama so I can see who's actually watched it. And with that, cheerio! That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up!